You're listening to Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon. Hey, what's up, Internet? This is Brandon. And this is Alex. And we're filmmakers. And we're also drinking bourbon. Kinda. Well, kind of. Kind of, sort of. Let's try this. We have, uh, it's a hot drink today. It is. It's kind of toasty. Let's see. Let's, let's try Cheers it. them first. Cheers. Boom. Sip on that. It's mm. probably really, be careful. It's boiling water. Mmm. What? Oh, my gosh. Dude. All right, everybody. All right, tell them what this is. We have entered into a whole nother realm of bourbon. This okay, you got you got to explain. Unbelievable. This, first of so all. right now, November, we are in the midst of the Lexington Distillery mm-hmm. takeover. Correct. They uh, they make Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. They make the Town Branch Bourbon we had. They make the Purse Lions American Malt Whiskey. Yep. And today we are drinking a product that they make called Bluegrass Sundown. It's very now this is flavored. a bourbon whiskey with grain neutral spirits, mm. vanilla, and coffee. It's amazing. This is one of the most <laughs> amazing things I've ever drank in my life. Bourbon and coffee liqueur. Try it. Now, now, this thing, you can't just pour this thing. We had to- There's a recipe. We had to do like a ritual. Dude. Alex, tell them what we were doing in well, the other room. We had to, first of all, follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. It's, oh my uh, gosh. It says, to enjoy the perfect bluegrass sundown. One, shake well and place two ounces bluegrass sundown in a glass. We did that. Yeah, absolutely. We measured it out. We were scientific about it. We used a shot glass. We did. Two, add four ounces boiling water and stir. Did you do that? You stirred it? We we, uh, we didn't have a teapot, but we went with a microwave. Yeah. (laughs) It was hot water. It was good. Uh, Three, tilt back of spoon, touching liquid surface, pour heavy cream onto back. So it's just this stuff, water, and cream, heavy cream. Do you want to know how I got the cream? How did you get the cream? So in the basement did of- Did you the... milk a cow and then like <laughs> no, add sugar? But and... in the building here at, at the studio at Sound Images, there's a little corner shop hmm. run by a ga- guy named uh, Shaq, Shag, Shag or Shaq, I think is his name. Shaq. Shaq. Uh, he's and like six, six, nine, seven. No, feet tall. he's like this cool Moroccan guy, and he's got a basically like a little corner store with like yeah. chips and soda stuff like that. Market. So I walk into his little market. Oh, he also has hookah pipes. Nice. So I walk in and I'm like, "Hey, uh, you got any whipped cream?" And he looks at me like, uh, and I'm like, "Yeah." And it was a weird request for a small store like this. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Wait a second. He goes, um, he was referring to his his partner. He said she might have some in the cooler. Actually, I think she just went shopping. What? She uses it for the waffles." <laughs> and he goes, I guess I could sell it to you. He goes, how much is it? I go, I don't know. So we Google the price of the Ready Whip. What? We find the price. I make him a deal, and he sold me an item that he doesn't normally sell, just so the listeners could hear <laughs> about this drink that we had. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty bartered good. for I, something that wasn't I readily available. I bartered oh, for yeah. the heavy whipping cream. That's amazing. It was well worth it. Oh, my gosh. It was worth the barter. Wow. This is delicious. It's coffee, bourbon, sweet cream I mean if if you like in the winter time in the fall time if you like a good Bailey's and coffee mm. yep. here's the thing but with a bourbon step cake. up your game yeah and get the Kentucky sundown this stuff bluegrass sundown I mean we're not just saying this because they're they're friends and partners of the no, show it's actually this really stuff is good. so delicious and it's warm it's getting cold outside and it's so bourbon it's perfect plus it's bourbon yeah Good call. Wow. So if you're out there, find a way, rob, cheat, steal, get a hold of the Bluegrass Sundown. Let us know what you think. This stuff is awesome. It's made by uh, the Lexington Distillery, also known as Alltech, is the parent company, Alltech. Mm-hmm. Um, they have uh, quite the line of bourbons and beer. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic bourbon barrel ale. I think we just got blown away by this. I'm impressed. I'm I didn't sur- know. I'm surprised. You know, it, yeah. it reminds me of the episode where Brad brought along some crazy like stout oh, the, beer. Yeah, the, that was uh, hopping frog. Yeah, that stout. was an uh, unexpected oh. uh, event. Yeah, it looked like motor oil coming yeah. out, but it tastes so, fantastic. Anyways, wow, what a great what a great way to start off the show. This is a good welcome back. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Speaking of welcome back, yeah, man, you. Uh, you left us hanging last week. We were- uh, I know, man. But, but I listened, we took advantage of it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> you did. I listened to the episode, and it was great. You guys nerded out on some audio. 
Yeah, we we you basically took full advantage of your of your degree. Yeah, it went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it got out of control. Um we 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 got nerdy on audio. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And um Sennheiser's been great and we're so excited that uh you know that Chris could join the show yeah. and and talk about that's some out of, the great of my stuff. wheelhouse anyway. So yeah. if I was going to miss one that's that's the one to miss. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh actually we um we're we're going to be doing a giveaway. Yeah. With the Sennheiser, giving away the Clip Digital mic. Yep. We're going to leave that open for another week. Good. Because we wanted to, uh, we're still adapting how to do the giveaways to allow people to have time to get in on them. For sure. So we're going to allow people... that to be open another week. Yeah. Um, and then eventually we're going to tell you guys sort of our new our new strategy. strategy. On, we just haven't had time to talk yeah. about it. People just need time because they don't always listen right when it comes out. Sure. So a couple weeks is good. Yeah. But after we give it away, you can't still be eligible. No. Because it's gone. Yeah. It's already been <laughs> been given away. So anyway, we're giving you a little more time. But um, that Let's said, gave away. you couldn't be on the show. You were I in no. Chi-Town, right? I was. What in the was world in were you doing up there? Chirac. What were you um, doing up there? I was on a shoot. I was well, getting paid to do what I love. Great. That's, that's pretty vague. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tell us about it. What, is, what's I, going on? I kind of got to be vague. I well, got to be a little vague. Okay. You don't, have to, you don't have to mention brands. You no. don't really have to mention. No, 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 but no. let's talk about it. So I got hired to do a project up in okay. Chicago Great. with a brand new client, director I've never worked with. Awesome. Uh, had a few conversations over the telephone via email. Good. Decided that we were a good match. Good fit. Yeah, we were a good fit. We had the same kind of tastes and sensibilities. Wonderful. So I got hired, uh, drove up because I needed the flexibility versus flying. It's only like four and a half hours. Yeah, shit. Yeah. That's the great thing about the Midwest and Cincinnati. We're four hours from Nashville. We're yeah. four hours from Chicago. From Detroit. Same thing. I mean, I mean it's all like four, yeah. five, six hours. Sure. So my kind of rule of thumb is that if it's within six hours, I'll drive it because I'll spend that much time at the airport anyway. Absolutely. You know? um, either way, so I get up there. I guess I should tell you, we, we started talking about it. The whole project is green screen. Was green screen. Okay, so you're totally making it up. Completely made up. The only thing that is realistic in any sense was the direction and quality of light. So that's kind of cool. Nice. So you're the only thing that matters. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it that way. No. Uh, there but were... the, the talent was real, right? You had real people, right? Real people. Okay. Real, real Good. beautiful people selling Good. stuff. Beautiful people selling yes, stuff. Exactly. And I but can't we can't talk what. about it. No. But I, somehow, I have to be very vague. beautiful people could be models. Could be. Stuff could be anything. Could be anything. Either way. We're going to leave it's it there. It's a product shoot, all green screen. Um, but so we were, we had three plates, three environments that we were trying to okay. place these objects that we were shooting sure. into. Sure. So you may have been shooting for. Uh, who knows? You wanted to put these characters on green screen, but really you're going to put them on the planet Mars. Yeah, they're going to be in three separate yeah, environments. They, so we have to create, I have to yeah. craft with my team the lighting to make it seem real. So sure. hard, soft, indoor, colored, outdoor, whatever. Yeah, sunlight, that, you know, lamps, whatever. It had to look real. So that was the, that's the cool thing. And all the post screen. guys. So you, I'm sure you had a technical director there who was saying, okay, actually, this is where the sun's going to be and this is where the. And or indoor lights are going to be? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, cool. So, you know, you start out with this blank slate, pretty much, this this green screen that can be replaced with whatever you want. And you put markers on it so that there's some camera movement. You can tell, okay, here, here's how the background's going to move in relation to the subject. Sure. Um, and then you say, yeah, okay, here's our sun or our lamp or our whatever. So you have to mimic that, how it would actually look if you're shooting it practically. Yeah. Pretty neat. Did you um, did you guys have like like boards? Did you have storyboards or art boards that you were yeah. trying to match these shots to? Yep. So we had a full storyboard. We had um, now were they were they style frames exported from the actual CG designs or were they just hand drawn like storyboard style? No, they were mock ups with kind of temporary plates and temporary models okay. and just the general feel that we were going for. Similar sizings and framings, stuff like that. Cool. So it's it's close as we get. Without actually shooting something and creating a CG back, sweet, yeah. It so it went neat. well. It went really well. So I had a, I had a, got up there. And I had a full day pre light one day. Okay. Uh, with the gaffer key grip and crew, we brought the AC brought in the camera at the end of the day, and we were able to look at you know framing and make sure everything. What'd was, you guys shoot on? 
we shot on these Sony F55 uh, 4K RAW, also recording 1080 proxies nice. inside the camera. Beautiful. So the RAW was, you know, flat, linear, like a log C look, whatever. It retains all the dynamic range, all the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sharpness, all yeah. that all that stuff. Um, and then the 1080 proxies were baked in Rec. 709. So they're they're crunchy and colored, and sure. you can drop those into a, a Adobe Premiere right away, right? And key it out really quick and put together a rough cut. Sweet. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So we shot Sony F55 with Cook S4 lenses. So nice. Yeah, it's really nice. They make good lenses. They make great lenses. Did uh, what kind of lighting setup did you guys go have? Did you? So I guess I had to change based on the scene, right? Yeah, three separate. Scenes, so three separate uh, approaches for for the lighting. So, but, did you have a mixture and color temperatures? Were you doing some daylight and some? No, no. no we, all... we try to keep it all neutral. Yeah, it was all tungsten lighting because we we're in a studio, so it's cheaper, and you can get a lot more. Cool. Yeah. So we did that, and um, so was it a full day else? shoot? Yeah. So we had one day pre light, one full day shoot. Okay. And so we pretty much lined everything out during the pre light. Mm-hmm. And during the shoot day, uh, you know, just knocked it out. Was there any dialogue or was it all just? Huh. Just, okay. be, just uh, you know, general shots. MOS. No nice. sound. So it was cool, though. Yeah, we, awesome. we shot at a, we, we needed a lot of light mm-hmm. for the the stylistic thing we were trying to achieve. So it was a cool challenge. You know, I've, I haven't done a ton of green screen work. I've done some sure. <clears throat> some small stuff. So this was nice to. Be able to really go for it, push it. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I've always, I've always been hesitant to live in the green screen world. I mean, yeah, it just takes so much work on the back end with with CG to get it to look right. Mm-hmm. And even then, even in the best case scenarios, oftentimes it, it can fake. come off kind of cheesy, or yeah. it can kind of come off. Um, even the best of the best, you know, you you look and you kind of go, you can tell. Oh, that was green screen. Yeah, you and. Can tell. Um, so I don't know. You know me. I'm always rooted in reality For of sure. the pain of suffering of the the human condition. Yeah. And I don't know, there's something about the green screen that I, it's hard for me. I think it's a cool challenge. I like I like now now that I've really we've done this one full bore. Yeah. It's, it's cool to be able to go back and forth. Because I would much rather like take these quote models that you had and put them wherever that they were going to be green screened in and just take them there. Yeah, well, right? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, I, ideally, you do that. But there's some things <laughs> that you just can't plan for, or can't do practically. Like beach shots in Chicago? Yeah, I mean, you can. Well, you yeah. kind of can. What a, yeah, <laughs> but there are just some things that you can't do, and it, it's so much easier to be able to sure. control everything inside in a studio. Right. You know, wind, whatever you want to do. Sure. Um, and just replace it later. You yeah, know. I I mean I get it. Yeah, you know it's I'm weird, excited to see it. It's yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a <laughs> weird way to think about it though. Like nothing's there. Like you have to okay, you're looking at the subject and think yeah. okay, the sun's here, the lamps here, the right. Oh, it's gonna, okay, so if the sun was coming in, it would be bouncing off a wall, and it would sure. look like this. And, you know. So let's. I mean, maybe a couple of practical takeaways for the listeners. You know, who are lighting their own stuff on green mm-hmm. screen? What What are some of the things for them to keep in mind? How do you get a nice? Because I know with green screen, it's all about you know a nice even lighting, yeah. So that the the guys on the back end can get a nice key, and not have any of the halo effect or any of that stuff. For sure. So, what are some of those basic takeaways that that you would give them? Like, hey, you might not have a huge budget, mm-hmm. but if you're shooting on green screen, keep these mm-hmm. things in mind. Basic takeaways for green screen shooting. Um. You have your subject far enough away from the actual green screen. You okay. get them too close, you get green bounce off of the surface. Mm. And so when you go to key that out later, say you have some green reflection in their hair, their, their face, their or whatever. Their skin would actually be green. It would take away their, Starts, their yeah. skin. Yeah. So you have to then go in and do multiple keys and masks and interior, out, exterior, you know, all okay. this weird so, stuff. So step one. Yeah, place them far enough away from the green that they screen. don't get spill off the green screen. Yeah, rule of thumb from what I've heard from people is like nine nine to ten feet, you know, eight to ten feet. All right, get them far enough away. I on this one, I had them way far out. But the further you bring them out, the bigger the green screen you have to have. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I mean, it, it also depends on the area that you're shooting. So if it's sure. just a tight shot of someone's face, you know, you only need a maybe like a four by eight fold out green screen. Right. Eight feet behind them. You know, it's a lock off, whatever. So rule number one, get them far, than, far enough away to where you can 
you know, actually cover them with the green yep. in the full frame. Rule number two is even green screen lighting. Okay. As even as you can so get you it. So don't, you don't want the background to be splotchy where there's a darker shade of green, a lighter shade of green. Yeah. You want it to be one shade of green. As even as you can get it. Yeah. In, in today's world, it's so much, it's so easy. It's easier to key nowadays. Mm-hmm. The programs today are so good, but yeah, sure. I mean, make your post guys life I think, a little easier. I think uh, all programs have a easy, an easy button, like a one key. Just, yeah, yeah, you push it and it's done. One click key. Yeah, um, but yeah, so make it as <laughs> as even as possible. Uh, I mean, I'm on this one. There's some things we could have done better for sure on that sure. part, but there were no complaints from posts so far. Cool. Uh, rule number three is shutter. Okay, which we've covered before. So our, our listeners should know what the shutter on the camera does in yeah. terms of the motion. I would say most of them do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The ones who don't, they can go back and listen to the shutter speed episode. Exactly. Yeah, we'll throw that up on the website. But shoot at a higher shutter angle. Okay. Higher shutter speed. Right. So if you're going angle, you know, typically you'll shoot drama stuff at 180, right, to get nice natural motion. Beautiful. Yeah. Shoot it at, you know, at least 90 degrees. If okay. not higher, depending on what you're shooting, uh, because it'll it'll reduce motion blur. So when they move their hand or hair or face or a product or whatever, there's not like a trail in between frames okay. of that object. So that when they go to key, they're not like taking out pieces of your arm or whatever. But is that gonna is that gonna take away from sort of the smoothness and the beauty of real life? And is that gonna feel a little like oh, that's green screen? Potentially, yeah. I mean, it, well, it's a, it's a sharper sure. movement. So if you're going for that, if you want that clean, sterile, sharp, actiony look, right? You know, it's it's fine. It's completely fine. Cool. Um, what else? What's Anything with the lighting, or you know, as far as lighting the subject, is there? Yeah. So on this one, we shot. I shot it at a really deep stop. Okay. Uh, between five, six, and eight on the lens. Yep. So because I wanted most things in focus, I didn't want to like have right. Eyeballs in focus or a lamp Yeah, because in focus, everything you know. else the, in post, they can adjust how much they want it in focus. They can just throw a blur on it. You could. It doesn't ever look right. Yeah, but so, I mean, you but, could. Yeah, they could. Theoretically, they could do that if they wanted. But for this, we wanted everything sharp, pretty, there, you know. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it, though. Yeah, so even green screen lighting, get your subject far enough away, shoot at a higher shutter speed, and deep stop, te- theoretically. How important was the pre-light? Very, very important. We spent a lot of time really dialing in the look. So we, Not only the lighting, but also sort of like where things are going to be in CG, right? Correct. So you yeah. were kind of doing some of that technical breakdown? Uh-huh. Hold on, let me sip on my uh, sun down here. Cool. Um, yeah, so we would dial, we dialed that in all on the first day so that when uh, everything got going on day two, the actual shoot day, it was just butter. Like there were no hiccups. We knew exactly what we were doing. Nice. It was good. It was like heavy cream on a sundown. It was like heavy cream on a sundown, <laughs> just buttery. That's and awesome, man. That's that's so cool. I'm, yeah. I'm excited so for I, you. I wish I could say more about what it was and what we did, but once this project is completed, I can Yeah, we'll divulge, post it on the site. Divulge more we can break it down a little we bit. We might even do a blog post. We could. That's we a, could that's something post. we've talked about. Adding some some yeah. content. Blog yeah. post to the FDB. We actually had a great little uh, little business meeting. <laughs> we did. So uh, Alex and I actually, you know, we started this podcast and we were kind of winging it. And uh, some of you who are, are listeners, long time listeners, how we wing life. Yeah, yeah. you uh, you may have you know from the early episodes, you've seen us get a little a little better, a little more polished. We've got better sound. We're in a studio. We're we're it starting evolves. to uh, to kind of we kind of know what we're doing now. And uh, so we decided we we're going to have a little little FDB podcast meeting, talk mm-hmm. about some things for the future, and uh, I'm excited to say we've got some cool things on the horizon. We've got a, a some semblance of a strategy now. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got a strategy, and we're working on some things. Right. One of the things I want to tease out, because this is going to be a lot of fun, we have uh, metrics um, on SoundCloud that tell us who's listening and where they're listening. Uh-huh. And what's really cool is to see the ge- ge- geographic layout of where our listenership comes from. There's some surprising from. ones. So yeah. what we're going to do is we are actually going to have a series of shows that we're going to just dedicate to some of our top listening cities. So mm-hmm. uh, I know just off the top of my head, our top five right now, I believe, are number one, the United States, of course. Number two, Canada. I think number three is London. Number four, I believe, is New Zealand. 
Of course, we love the NZ. Oh, yeah. And number five really surprised us. I was super surprised. But it is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It is. And so- Believe it or not. If you if you are listening in Saudi Arabia, please shout out to us. We um, want to hear from you. We know some of our listeners in the other countries that I just mentioned. Uh-huh. Uh, but we don't know, really know if anyone is really listening to us in Saudi Arabia. I'm sure they are. I assume they are. The metrics tell us they are. Yeah. I want to know what their production scene's like there. They have like a whole film scene. I know. They have a film, and I film wanna, festival. But I want to know more about it. I know. So what we're going to be doing in these coming shows where we talk about countries like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, cities like London, uh, New Zealand, of course, is we're going to dedicate entire episodes to these cities and countries mm-hmm. Where we're going to talk about their film scene, what they got going on with yeah. film festivals, big films from you know there? top ten list yeah. of the greatest films from that region, directors from that region, maybe have their drink of choice, yeah, you know? maybe have their interview, yeah. uh, interview with people, you know, from from there. From there. So It'd be really cool. That's I'm really excited about that. As you should be. Yeah, I'm. It's going to be stoked awesome. about it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, we just got a lot of things that are that are really fun. We got some really cool opportunities. We do. Um, one of the things that is coming up is we are partnering uh-huh. to help launch Watershed Bourbon's new product, which is, I believe, already available. Yeah, called the uh, it's called the Old Fashioned in a bottle. They took a recipe, created an old fashioned, mm-hmm. put it in a bottle. Which we make old fashions on a show all the time. Yeah, we we've got the bitters, we've got the the, yeah. the sweet syrup. All but this that stuff. is already done, right? Already made. Yeah, and we were so excited they invited us to record the podcast episode live at their event, FTB Live. So we're going to gonna do it live, and Greg, their master distiller, yeah. is going to be on the show uh-huh. in front of a live audience. We're going to talk bourbon. Yeah. We're going to talk movies. We're going to talk film. And then we're going to schmooze. We're going to drink. We're going to get reactions from the crowd. And it's going to be great. So it's yeah. it's exciting, the opportunities that are coming our way. We're able to bring you guys really interesting content, things like live events. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in that process, we're also going to be releasing uh, our first exclusive screen-printed poster. Yeah, that's right. Dedicated to the old fashioned. That's right. And uh, designed by Kyle Ebersall, uh, mm-hmm. our lead designer at Leap Frame. And I will make sure that we hold at least one of them for a giveaway on the show. Oh, it has to happen. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. We, I've already seen some, you know, mock-ups. preliminary yeah. mock ups. And then, oh, I'm yeah, excited. It's cool. So, I'm excited. so anyway, a lot of cool things you know happening. What, what I else would like up? to do. What's that? Is, I don't know if they'd be up for it, but it, I want to do it personally is do a head to head comparison with. Your old fashioned and the bottled old fashioned. Oh, all right. So my 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 yeah. standard concoction. So you taking watershed bourbon and making an and old making fashioned. old fashioned, and then take the watershed bottled old fashioned and do a head to head. Man, this could be dangerous. I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, it'd probably be the same. We can set that you up. You might put a little more bourbon in yours. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, good things are happening. Uh, we're we're really excited. But what about yeah. uh, you know what what else are are you are you excited about anything? I'm always excited about stuff. Yeah. You know me. Um, more than anything, I'm just excited for a few projects I got coming up. Sweet. Yeah. It's always good to have projects coming up. Something to keep me occupied. Yeah. You know me. I'm, I'm yeah. always, what, every like five days I release new demo reel, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's been, it's been, it's been quite a, a few months. It's been like six months or something, five, six yeah. months. But I've got, I've had a lot of really cool projects recently that uh, I'm going to incorporate into this I'm awesome. stoked yeah it's great so I'm, I'm doing that and doing some more like uh, promotional self-promotional stuff which is always just part of the game this freelance game yeah I'm trying to make new contacts and you gotta hustle that's for sure yeah. going fishing speaking yeah. of which um, we've actually you know heard some cool stuff from you guys out there uh, yeah. and I want to try to dig up this this thing that was very inspirational to me and um, I think some of you other filmmakers out there might my dig it. So uh, I'm going to pull up a uh, a message I got on the old Twitter and uh, share it with you guys. So just a second. Here it goes right now. And keen Twitter mm. filling time. <laughs> and cool. So this Found is uh, this is what I, I got from a, a listener, John Silva. Uh, we were chatting on the Twitter. And he says... Um, I'm a huge fan and supporter. Been listening since episode three. Uh, was able to give you guys a nice rating on iTunes. 
Thank you so much for doing what you guys do by educating, connecting, and encouraging so many of us. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Love says, uh, I have to thank, uh, thank you for getting me inspired again, and I'm actually filming a short film in three weeks, something I haven't done in four years. Whoa. Congrats. Uh, wish me luck. Um, he's shooting it on the old Canon 7D. Great. And uh, he says maybe some Maker's Mark bourbon will help the process. I think it will. Thanks again. I think any type so, of bourbon will help the process. These type of messages, when we get to, to hang out and chat with you guys mm-hmm. that are listening out there, are just so cool. And I think it's really cool that he feels that he has a place here at Filmmakers yeah. Drinking Bourbon where he can tune in on a show uh-huh. and not feel alone, feel like he's part of a community, yeah. feel like he's he's part of something uh, that's happening on a larger scale. It makes that, me feel warm and fuzzy. Inside. It makes me feel but like that might, drinking. That might be the bourbon that's that making me feel warm and fuzzy. The bluegrass sundown. Um, <laughs> no, it, it feels good that's to cool, hear that. Right? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what we set out to create initially. Was this kind of uh, filmmaker creative space where we can just talk, you know, yeah. get feedback and bounce ideas so, around. Anyway, it seems like cool. we're succeeding. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So, uh, what, yeah. what have you been? What have you been watching, man? You really haven't had time to watch much, have you? Not a ton. Um, we did. I went to the movies. What did I see? What are some things that are out right now? Uh, Spectre. I saw Spectre. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> Something. I need to see it again. Yeah. I, I'll say that. I need to go see it again. In the. I don't know if I was in the right frame of mind. <laughs> That's usually never good when it's it's kind of like is that good or bad when you're like I don't know how I feel about this film I need to see it again. Yeah, well I also think, you know, I was gearing up for this big Chicago shoot and I think I was just yeah. you know, mentally elsewhere. I think I was sure. I was you know, it was a big opportunity and I was just thinking through the uh pre-production yeah. and stuff and You get a little nervous. Yeah. You were uh you were, you made sure you had your right shoes, your right I shirt. I did. But that's because <laughs> I care. It's yeah. because I care. But anyway, no, I need to go see it again and just Focus on that. Sure. Now, now that this Chicago job's done, I've you know everything else is you know can can just nice fall away. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But, uh, yeah, well, there's some know, really cool you, things about it. Though. You know, it will help huh. you relax. Bourbon? No, but I oh. got a show that's that I, it's that might be a little lighthearted and kind of fun to unwind on. Is it like a kids animated show? No, it's not a kids animated show. It's uh, it's uh, Aziz uh, Master of None on Netflix. I've heard good things about that. It's funny. Yeah, I it's hear here's my the thing. Keep tweeting that out. Here's the thing. I'm not um, I'm not a huge comedy fan. I don't usually you know turn on yeah. the comedy channel. I don't you know watch comedy movies. I'm not really uh you know hey I'm gonna watch Amy Schumer stand up. Yeah, you know me typically like. I find I, I don't I'm not offended by you know crude humor. It, it's like I don't have a p- moral problem with it. Mm. I just find it to be intellectually stupid. I think it's more of a, and so it's when a it, cover up when I hear that when boss. I hear yeah. that sort of humor or some of the Jed Apatow shows. Yeah, I just get bored and I'm like, really? Do you think I'm that stupid? Mm-hmm. So that that's just me. Oh, they do. They do. Think that's it. just me. yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, this this is funny. It's kind of smart. It's kind of witty. It, it, I heard. You're, and tell I me like if this it. is true. How many of you seen uh, the whole thing? Okay, I heard that it's a just a knockoff on Louis. Well, I I don't know. Your you're, your hesitation says a lot. Well, I <laughs> I don't know that I think Louis the end all be all. No, I I, I find but it was first. I find Lou. Well, there's plenty of things before Lou, before Louis. There was yeah. Seinfeld. There was Larry David. There well, was, when you take that dry, self deprecating sure. humor, but that's not what Aziz does. Okay, he's yeah. not dry and self deprecating. This is actually a very I found it very empowering show. Really, a very interesting show, and it challenges stereotypes and and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I know nothing about it. Can you give me a brief rundown of what basically? It, it's just it? Aziz kind of doing his thing, and uh, and he's got some friends, and they uh, they. So he's just, a comedian in the show. Well, no, but he's like a, a struggling, aspiring actor. Ah, okay. And um, and they just have these sort of like just funny like moments. Like it's just it's just about life. Yeah, it's very Seinfeld esque. Okay, but it's I think it's it's like the the it's a show about the nothing. millennials version of Seinfeld. Right. Yes, Master right. of None. Right. It's it's exactly a show, show about, about nothing. nothing. I like it. But it's really fun, and uh, there's some great. There's actually some great little like films within each episode. Like there's there's one scene where. The grandfather, they're they're dealing with like, uh, you know, culture 
culture, immigrant cultures. And so these, these second, third generation kids who were born in the States, their parents came over on a boat. And so they, their mm. parents lived these amazing lives of struggle. Yeah. yeah, they're here on iPhones. And so uh, there's one scene where this this Chinese father says to his son, you know, can you go to the store and pick up some rice? And then the chi- the main character, who's uh, is Aziz's friend, mm-hmm. he says, ah, oh, dad, I, I really don't want to be late for the movie. I like to, to play those, you know, trivia questions before the movie. Yeah. And then it immediately cuts to the scene of where the father grew up in China, where he had to uh, kill his own pet chicken for dinner and cut the head off of it. And it shows this like amazing, oh, like backstory God. film of like struggle. Yeah. And then it comes back to the same kitchen and it picks up from that same question. And the kid's like, oh, dad, I, I really don't want to miss those <laughs> trivia questions. And then it just cuts to the eyes of the father. And he's like, Okay, son. The juxtaposition and it's like this of like struggle versus total. Well, it's just yeah. this total like wow. let down heavy moment of like here's this kid oh. in modern America, yeah. this twenty something. Well, no idea what real who, struggle is. Yeah. Who can't even help his dad get rice, and his dad like in order for him to have that moment to Murder go hang out pet. with his friend. Like, it's just, <laughs> just, but it's done in a way that's funny, but it's also like you appreciate the depth of what's being said. Yeah, yeah. It's there's, interesting. A mes- it's, there's a message. It's pretty it. cool. I'll have to check it out. I'm not. I'll say yeah. this. I'm not a huge Aziz fan. So. I think he might change after you watch this. I might. Yeah, it's pretty good. He, yeah, I can only watch so much of the yeah. stand up, but yeah, I'll, I'll so, check it out. I'll definitely anyway. check it. out. I need something to something to occupy it's some fun. time. So anyway, that's what I've been watching. Yeah, but, actually, you know what I else I've been watching? What's that? But I haven't really been watching. I've been playing. Dude, did you buy a clarinet? I did, but that's not what I was. Gonna, <laughs> that's not what I was going to get into. <laughs> You said plain. Oh, I know. I thought you were talking about your clarinet. I was going to go the other media route and say a video Oh, video game. games. Yeah, yeah, Okay. So I bought um, Fallout 4. Yeah? Which is unbelievable. A lot of storyline? Lots of storyline. Nice. But have you seen the commercials for it? Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, great. Yeah. They did a great job of that. The Wanderer. Yeah. I'm the Wanderer. So you're kind of like, uh, you're kind of like, what's his name? Uh, House of Cards. You come home from a stressful day at the- yeah, the White House. Blow away you, some zombies. Yeah, yeah. There's some, uh, you know, irradiated frogs or whatever nice. that's bounce around the wasteland. All right. No, it's a cool. great game, and there's it's really deep. And Is it super violent? Extremely violent. Okay. Yeah. See, I I can't play any of those games. Yeah. I've got a you know a six year old. I'm sure he would love them, but I I just don't want to open that door. Right no, now. no. He needs a few more years. This is there's language, there's violence, there's sexual innuendo. There, but it's like all for a reason. I mean, sure. you you. You know, are back in this world after a nuclear war. Yeah, you yeah. gotta have. Of course, it's dark. Sex and violence. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, everyone's just struggling. Speaking of struggle, this is the real struggle in the wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's anyway, cool, man. But it, that's what I've been filling a few uh, measly hours of free time with. Nice. Yeah, just getting lost. That's fun. So. But you also. But are... I also bought a clarinet. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I can't I'm, wait because I, I I am considering I have a ukulele I've been playing a lot and I'm gonna I'm considering getting a baritone ukulele which is a little bigger yeah and um, isn't that just l- called a guitar no <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna learn jazz ukulele mm. so I think that if we All practice right. enough yeah we might even be able to like have a special episode where we do a performance. I'm thinking like a little like you know, doom 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 doom, and then you come in. That's a trombone, but yeah, you know I, I, mean. I get what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I think that'd be I pretty think we awesome. Could do that. Yeah, we you, let's not put a date on it, but yeah, and maybe we let's maybe we could do. um maybe we could each play one of our favorite like themes from a movie. Yeah, like Star Wars. Yeah, so we'll do like two tracks: one for you, mm-hmm. one for me, and then let the listeners vote. Mm. On the which version they like better? Who, who played it better? <laughs> You're obviously gonna win. You're the master so, musician anyways. over here. With speaking your of audio speaking background, speaking of letting the the people choose, yeah. did you did you see our our poll? So we I had did. our first poll there was, we a couple weeks ago. Poll. First FDB poll, uh-huh. which was a lot of fun, and um, it went something like, "Who would you rather have a drink with? Who would right? you rather have a drink with?" And there were some choices. It was between Darth Vader and Han Solo. Yep. And at the end of the day, all all things aside, when everybody we tallied up the votes, yep. people, I believe, I'll double check here, but I believe they preferred to drink with Hans. Hans? Hans is Solo. Is he from Sweden now? Yeah. My name is Hans Solo. Yeah, it came down to 56% of our listenership out of 16 votes yeah. said they would rather drink with Hans Solo. Of course. 44% were on the dark side. Why would you ever want to have a drink with Darth Vader? <laughs> 
I'd be kind of cool, man. Because yeah. how's he even drink? <laughs> He's, he's got, got a, that mask. He's got to take off that, he's got mask, that mask and show his like <sighs> deformed <sighs> face. <sighs> he's burned. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. That was a horrible Darth <laughs> Vader. <laughs> uh, give me bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> give me the bourbon. <laughs> so that's fun. So we're going to be doing more of those. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it's kind of a, we're going to do them kind of as we're inspired. I like. The I polls. don't know that they're going to happen weekly or whatnot. But no. if you're a listener, follow us on Twitter. We are FDB Podcast mm-hmm. at FDB Podcast on Twitter at FDB Podcast on Instagram, mm-hmm. and we're going to be doing fun things like polls on. Um, on our Twitter and on Instagram, as always, you may have noticed we're doing a lot more video. We're showing behind the scenes. Yes. We're giving you promo teasers, showing you the bottles of what we're drinking, and we're just having a lot of fun with that. Mm-hmm. So we live in a media world, hollering so. at us. Yeah. Um, as always, you can connect with us at fdbpodcast.com where we put all of the relevant links, links to the show, etc. That's also the best way to contact us. Yeah. There's an Ask Me Anything yeah. section there. Uh, where you can literally ask us anything, yeah, and give we'll us links, you. links to what you're working on. Ask us about uh, anything, prior episodes, stuff uh-huh. you'd like to hear on the show. Tell us about bourbons, maybe you've discovered yeah. that we haven't. Share yet. with us Love some that. bourbons. We'll try to reach out to those vendors and, and mm-hmm. get them uh, on the show. Um, those are all great, great opportunities. So connect with us there. Absolutely. And guess what else? Huh? We uh, so some people in this world are are all Mac. All in, yes, all the time. Me. Some people <laughs> are all PC. They want flexibility. They want total control. They are pretty politically and, correct. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe that's our next poll: Mac or PC? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, but essentially, hmm. if you are anti Mac, then you're probably not a huge fan of iTunes. No. You probably don't want to even open up iTunes to listen to our podcast. Although I'm pretty sure that it comes standard on everything now. But yes. I get what you're going, where you're going, because we're on multiple. Platforms. Because yeah. Google Play, the Google uh-huh. Play Store has just launched. They are launching podcasts now. Yeah. On the Google Play Store. And guess who's a part of it? Guess who is now going to be a part of that? Not us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of course we are. No, we are. So we just got an email and uh, we're accepted. Yeah. And so uh, why would Google Play not want the number one rated I know. bourbons? Absolutely. Podcast. Yeah. This, Jesus. It's the future. Yeah. So anyway, now all of our PC listeners who absolutely hate the legend and when you say and PC, ghost, you mean personal computer. Yeah, the ghost okay. of, of Steve Jobs. Um, then was that too soon? Eh, maybe. R.I.P. Yeah, I just got a tingle. I think he's in here with us. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you are absolutely opposed to iTunes, you have a new major platform in Google Play. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty awesome. You have iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud. Yeah, and I hear that Spotify might be kind Everywhere. of creating a little section for podcasts. I would love that. I think that's great. I use Spotify all the time. All the time. That's so we just, you know, driving up to Chicago immediately yeah. after the shoot. I drove back to Cincinnati and then we drove down to Arkansas to visit yeah. my grandfather. You, what uh, did you listen to, by the way? What do you mean? Did you uh, on your drive? On my drive? You uh, listened to uh, episode twenty four. I listened to episode twenty four. You know it what? It's fantastic. a great to listen to while you're driving. It is. You know, so if you're out there, especially you, if your commute is between thirty minutes absolutely. and an hour long each day, yeah. you can listen to a full episode. And when you're on set with your your filmmaking buddies, you know, let them know about uh, filmmakers drinking bourbon and say, "Hey, on your way to on your way to the set, on the way to the commute, if you're in L.A., you're you're going to sit in traffic for at least five hours. Yeah. You can listen to our whole collection out there. Turn, turn on an episode. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, That's but uh, a lot of great things happening. I'm excited you're back, buddy. Yeah, me too, man. This is good. Cheers. And uh, cheers, cheers. this wonderful product we've sipped on today, the Bluegrass Sundown, is unbelievable. It's quite tasty. If you can get a hold of it, do it. If you mm-hmm. can't, tweet at Kentucky Ale and beg them to distribute to your area. Yeah. Because I don't know if they're shipping to Saudi Arabia right now. I don't know about that. That's a, that's a good question. So, we'll have to, when we get those guys on, we'll have to ask. Them. We'll have to ask. So. Um, what have you been working on, man? We we talked a lot about me. I want to hear about yeah, you. It's re- well, it's really all about you. It's I mean, yeah, you're right. It's but. pretty much all about you. I want to hear about you though. Um, you know, just you know, I shot a couple corporate things. We've got some yeah. long long term relationships with some corporate clients. You've got um, some doc stuff coming out though. Doc stuff. Like yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Doc, we've got doc. yeah, we got some branded content pieces. Um, but we've talked about those in the past. I know they're just um, cool. I like them. I don't know, man. Jealous. We're... I wasn't there for. <laughs> We're, uh, 
yeah, we're we're having a good time trying to uh, continue to shape our point of view. I think you know that's really what it comes down to. I had a meeting today. I'll, I'll tell you a story. This is kind of what's going on. Right. We had a prospect meeting today with a with a company, and when I walked in the door, I noticed on their flat screen TV they had this beautiful new video, mm. really well done, looked great, shot well, but it was definitely a, a, a standard corporate video. Like it was. Um, the people were who were talking were given talking points, mm. and they were using marketing words, um, those types of things. Mm-hmm. And the shots were, you know, pretty standard shots. You had the standard um, drone shot outside of the company building. Um, sure. You know, look Everywhere at our nowadays. look at our building, mm-hmm. and and it was cool. It was good. It was well done. And you know, I thought when when we sat down with them, I said, you know, you, you guys have a great vendor. You know, this video, the videos you have clearly are, are well done. If you're happy with that vendor, then by all means, you know, we want to respect that because the production community is small. And and if you like working with somebody, then, you know, work with those people. Mm-hmm. And I shared with her, I said, but, you know, what we do is we, we have a unique point of view where we feel like we can really bring forth the humanity of, of a story. And that is... That is one of the things that I love to do as a director is I want to dig into an interview and dig into the content and the footage to really find those moments that feel authentic. Mm. And and I really don't like teleprompters. I really don't like canned answers and marketing terms and green screen. Yeah. And so what I did was I just kind of explained that to them and said, hey, this is kind of our point of view. And if that's something you're into or if you have a piece that would fit that better, mm-hmm. then we'd love for you to think of us. Um, but if, if not, then, you know, by all means, you've got great relationships. I say that because I want to encourage our listeners. Um, mm. We live in an age where everybody can rent the same camera. Everybody can rent the same lights. Everybody True. can get the same drone. Everybody, most likely, is sharing the same crew, depending on your market. Mm-hmm. There's only so many people. So in smaller markets, all the freelance crew are working with all the production companies. Yep. So everybody is on a level playing field. The only thing that competitors or anybody else can't do is they can't be you. Mm -mm. They don't have your brain. They don't have your heart. They don't have your mind. And if you are able to craft a strong point of view that allows your style of filmmaking and storytelling to stand out in a unique way, then you can position that in the marketplace and you can find a niche where whatever it is that you do really well, somebody out there wants that. And so I want to just encourage people to, you know, Start to think less about gear and start to think more about who are you. Wow. I'm, so, I'm so inspired right now. Man, that, was, that came out good. <laughs> I'm so inspired right wow, now. Wow, that's the... No, but you're right. I mean, That's even the sundown talking. If you want to go specifically, you have certain directors that, you know, they elicit certain performances a certain way or DPs that shoot a certain way and you have different looks. There's so many guys, you're right, like you see this kind of flat desaturated log C looking cinematography out there, which I'm not saying is bad at all, yeah. but it's a thing and a lot of people can do it. Sure. But everything's starting to blend together. So when you're able to position yourself outside of that, put a little oomph on it, you make yourself immediately more marketable, maybe not to a broad audience, right. but definitely to a specific client. Yeah. So that's a cool Or in that. an interview, if you can, if you can really start to work the talent in an interview yeah. and get that one nugget, that's priceless. Oh yeah, um, that sets you apart because not everybody can do that. Interv- the the art of directing and interviewing is is not easy. No, and to get great performance, great content, sometimes it's just the right look. It's the right look in the eyes. But if you don't know how to pull that out, then y- you fall flat. And mm-hmm. and so just those are some things that I that I've been learning. And so as I'm going into, we've done a lot of pitching recently and talking to people. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've focused on. As I've said, you know, hey, we we. We can do these these things over here. For sure. That's not really where our heart's at. No. But this is what we love to do, this body of work here. And if if that aligns with what you're trying to do, then I think this could be a beautiful thing. For sure. And it, I think it resonates with a lot of the yeah, people we're talking to. You, you want to? I think that's just a good general idea. Is you want to attract the work that you want to do. Don't just go out and yeah. sell yourself to everything. Yeah, Be, you, yeah. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is say no. Exactly. Just say no. Just say no. That's what Nancy said. Say no to bad projects. Yeah. But, so well, that's cool, man. So it's you're, fun. Just, you're out there working. Good. Yes, man. We got some things in the pipeline. Nothing worth talking about. Um, you know. 
but it's that's good. how it goes though you know absolutely all of a sudden it's just gonna be like we got this badass project yeah. that came out of nowhere from <laughs> yeah. a, somebody we talked to a year and a half ago exactly that now wants to just go for it yeah and you know what's fun is is this is kind of how this community works and it's so fun to to look at a lot of um our followers on instagram and twitter they tweet out the coolest stuff they're always tweeting their behind the scenes pictures and stuff so if you want to follow filmmakers feel free to to copy followers from uh fdb podcast Mm -hmm. and uh because typically everyone who's following us are real filmmakers across the country so if you want to stay in the loop and see what people across the country are doing it's a cool and fun way to do that and see like what are their setups what are their rigs it's it's pretty sweet Mm -hmm. So, you know, another thing we should do is in the same line as that is on the site, throw up a, another list, a top list of hashtags to follow on Instagram and Twitter. All right. So there's some good ones that, you know, you follow a certain hashtag, you'll see nothing but behind the scenes, videos, photos, right? whatever. It's pretty cool. So those are the people I follow. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Hashtags. Hashtags. Pound signs. (laughs) Whatever you want to cool, call it. Cool, man. Well, hey, it's been a great episode. It has. It's been awesome. Lots of stuff coming up. Being able to be uh, back in the box with you, buddy. I know. Yeah. Was that dirty? <laughs> back in the box. <laughs> I feel like we're in a box. Is that, Dave, is that a, is that term, is that safe for the airways? Yes. Back in the box? Why yeah. would it not be safe? I don't know. It just seems weird. <laughs> Animals in a cage here. We're yeah. looking out of our habitat at Dave, our back zookeeper. In the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, All right. we, we put Dave on the spot. Anyway. Cheers, um, man. Well, uh, cheers. The sundown's yeah. gone. The sun sundown's has gone g- down. The sun has gone <laughs> down on this episode. And yeah. uh, ne- next week will be our final uh, Lexington Distillery episode. We are drinking their Hallmark product, the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale Beer. And yeah. it's tasty. It is tasty. So it. we'll have to get those in the fridge nice and cooled. We will. Well, cool, man. As always, a pleasure. Glad yeah, to man. be back and looking forward to what's to come. All right. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. This podcast was recorded live at Sound Images Studio. Find out more at soundimages.com.